The rapid advance of the Ukrainian army in the Kursk region has stopped talk in the West about a ceasefire and negotiations. Instead, Western capitals are now discussing new arms supplies to Ukraine and permission to use them. The Telegraph writes about this. The publication notes that the successful advance of the Ukrainian armed forces across Russian territory has forced the Kremlin to redeploy thousands of soldiers from the occupied regions of Ukraine to the Kursk region. This is disrupting Russian dictator Vladimir Putin's plans to continue pressure on the front in Ukraine and achieve a turning point in the war. From now on, this will be more difficult to achieve, the analyst states. The article also states that due to the Ukrainian armed forces operation in the Kursk region, Moscow will no longer be able to insist on freezing the war along the current front line, since in that case part of the Russian Federation's territory will remain under Kiev's control. The Telegraph says that the window of time allotted to the Kremlin for victory this year has closed and the situation is beginning to change in Kiev's favour. Zelensky now has wind in his sails, finally supported by his Western colleagues, the author emphasises. Superb Ukrainian intelligence and US-provided weaponry are being credited for enabling the rapid advance of Ukrainian forces into Russian territory over the past week. Some analysts believe they could move even faster if Washington allowed them to use the most sophisticated weapons at their disposal. Vladislav Zelezniov, a former spokesman for the Ukrainian Armed Forces General Staff, told VOA's Russian service that Ukrainian intelligence and the US provided high-mobility artillery rocket systems known as HIMARS had been critical to the stunning advance. Ukrainian intelligence worked perfectly, he said. Therefore, some of the enemy columns rushing to the aid of the Russian army in the Kursk region were destroyed thanks to artillery and drones, perhaps aviation. And of course, the real scourge of the Russian army is the HIMARS, which turn into ashes a huge amount of weapons, equipment and personnel of the Russian army, he said. The successful offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region was a real shock for Russian propaganda and forced it to change the tone of its statements. Now Russian TV no longer talks about capturing Kiev or Kharkov in three days, but instead prepares Russians for the fact that the Russian Federation will have to lose its territories. For example, propagandist Maxim Yusin believes that the Russian Federation will have to sacrifice the entire border area. He stated this on the air of the meeting place, program on the NTV channel hosted by the well-known propagandist Andriy Nokin. Calm down, try to look cynically. Although it is incredibly difficult, less emotions, look at the map, at the map of Russia, preferably, and compare these lost territories with the map of the huge Russia. Yes, we need to evacuate from all the border areas, from everything. Prepare for the worst case scenario. Prepare for the fact that these territories, God willing, without people, in order to evacuate everyone, including old women, will have to be sacrificed, he said. Earlier, it was reported that Russian propagandist Vladimir Solovyov spoke on air about the possibility of Russia's defeat in the war, commenting on the breakthrough of the Ukrainian army in the Kursk region. Russian director and regular participant in Solovyov's show, Karen Shaknazarov, admitted that Russia could lose the war. We must proceed from the fact that we can lose. We can, if such blunders continue. He said, describing the events near Kursk, and added that this is not panicking, but an understanding of the price that the Russian Federation will have to pay. During Shaknazarov's speech, Solovyov nodded his head, agreeing with him, and at the end he declared that if Russia were to be defeated, there would be neither the country nor humanity apparently threatening a nuclear strike. There, the actions of the Russian armed forces in this region were called a gaff. In turn, propagandist Olga Skabeva told Russians with horror on live television about the entry of British Challenger 2 tanks into the Kursk region.